Hello and welcome to the Walking Talking Topic Transformations Question 1 with Barton. Now question 1 is a classic four-parter that's going to test our knowledge of all the transformations so I thought it would be a good one to start. So let's have a look at this. Enlarge the shape shown on the grid by scale factor of 2 using A as the centre of enlargement. Now often on enlargement questions you get a coordinate that you need to find first but this one's been nice, it's told us where A is. But it's also been a little nasty because not often is, is the centre of enlargement actually inside the shape. But our rules still apply. The way I do these is I say, all right, scale factor 2. So I work out how far I need to go from the centre of enlargement to each of my points. And then I come back to the centre and just go twice as far. So let's have a look. Say I want to know where that point goes. Well, I've got to go from my centre, one to the right and one up. Instead, I'm going to go one, two to the right and two up. And I'm going to mark it on. Let's take this corner here. I've got to go one to the left and one up. So instead, I'm going to go one, two to the left and one, two up. And I mark it on there. And this fun just keeps uh, continuing. So to find this corner here, I need to go one, two down and one to the right. So I'm going to come back to the center. And instead, I'm going to go one, two, three, four down. And instead of going one to the right, I'm going to go two to the right. So I always go twice as far. Let's take this corner here. I have to go one, two, three down, and one, two to the right. So instead of going three down, I'm going to go six down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And instead of going two to the right, I'm going to go four to the right. One, two, three, four. Now you start to build up a picture of the shape. But I personally wouldn't take a risk. I'd keep doing the points, and then we can do a nice little check whether we're right at the end. So let's take this one. One down and one to the left. Instead, I'm going to go two down and two to the left. Now, don't worry if you get something like that inside the original shape. That's absolutely fine. Uh, let's take this point here. So we need to go two down and two left. So instead, I'm going to go four down. One, two, three, four, and four left. One, two, three, four. Building up a picture of our shape. And I think this is my last one here. One, two, three down and two to the left. So instead, one, two, three, four, five, six down and one, two, three, four to the left. Now, here's the nice thing. If you've done it point by point and you join it up, for free, you get a nice little checking mechanism that I'll chat about in a second. So if you would join all these points up nice and neatly with and a bit of that. Now, here's your first checking mechanism. Firstly, if you check the length of your original side and compare them to your new sides, they should be twice as long because it's a scale factor of 2. So if we take this, that's got a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, and the new side's got a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Looking good. Uh, let's just check another. This side's got a length of 1, 2, 3, that side there. This side's got a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Looking really good. And if you want to be particularly vigilant to check you've really got it, if you join up, all your um, original points um, and put them through your new points just like any other center of enlargement your question all those will always meet at the center and I'll just show you with one more with those extreme ones so you know you've definitely got that question right so there's enlargement scale factor 2 but the fun doesn't stop there in fact it's only just getting going on this question because now we get a lovely reflection question so reflect in the line y equals 2. Now straight away, if you don't know what y equals 2 looks like, you're getting this question wrong. y equals 2 is a line where every coordinate must have a y coordinate of 2. Now don't confuse it with the y axis. y equals lines are horizontal because every point on this horizontal line here has a y coordinate of 2. Sometimes people like to remember it, it crosses the y-axis at 2. Whatever works for you, but you must get your line right first. And then the rest of it is pretty straightforward. To reflect in there, I tend to count how far each point is away from the line and then make sure it's the same distance from the line on the other side. So if we take this point, we go 1, 2, 3, 4 away from the line. So let's keep going another 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Make a little dot there. This point here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 away. So let's make sure we get 7 away this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you'll start to see a picture of the shape build up. I'll just do one more to check. 1, 2, 3, 4 away. 1, 2, 3, 4 away. And I hope my final point is going to go there. And there's just one little thing that you might want to check just when you've finished. And that's that the shape 
shape is the exact same size in terms of the length of the sides and the area. That is a one, two, three, four, five, six across and three down, and this is also a one, two, three, four, five, six across and three down. So I think I'm going to help myself to the marks for that one, but only because I knew what my line looked like. What's next in this fun four parter? Well, we've got a little bit of translation. Translate the rectangle below by four minus two. Now, again, if you don't know what that vector means, you're in trouble there. Your top number tells you how far right or left you've got to go. And if it's positive, you've got to go right. The bottom number tells you how far up and down you've got to go. And this is a negative 2, so we've got to go down. So we're going right 4 and 2 down. Pick a point and figure out where it goes. So it's got to go right 4, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 2, 1, 2. And just mark on where your new point goes. Then just do it for each of the points. 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1, 2. I personally wouldn't gamble at this stage in drawing the rest of the rectangle. You might as well just check it with each of your points. 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1, 2. Nice. 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1, 2. And then the advantage of doing this, when you join it up nicely with your ruler, is that your new shape should again be the exact same size, and in fact point facing the exact same way as your new shape, which I think it is, so things are looking up there. So we come to our fourth and final bit, and there can only be one type of transformation that this is. It's the one we haven't had. It is a bit of rotation. Now, some people are a bit freakish in the way that they can picture rotations without tracing paper. I'm not one of those people. I always need tracing paper. So uh, let's use some tracing paper now. Rotate the rectangle shown on the grid through 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. The origin, that is the point zero, zero. First things first, let's get that marked on. Now, to rotate, you're going to need to trace round your shape. So here we go, got a nice bit of tracing paper here. Trace round my shape. I should be using a ruler, but no, don't tell anybody. And then there's my center of enlargement, and I've got to go 90 degrees clockwise. Clockwise, the way a clock goes round. So that's clockwise that way, and 90 degrees is going to be a quarter of a turn. So I'm going to take this, and hopefully this works. Turn it round, turn it round, turn it round. And I get it to there, I think. Now, it's up to you how you do this. Some people are miles better at this than me. But I kind of peel back. So make a note where that is. That's at 2.7. So let's put a little flick at 2.7. Pop it back just to check I haven't messed that up. Line up me center. Next one. Let's get this one down here. I think he's at 2.1. Let's get him on there. Yeah, I think he's going to be three across, so let's mark him and mark him. But when I've got him where I think he is, I'm not gambling on that because I'm useless at these sometimes. Let's put it back on and check. Yeah, that's looking good. And once we've got it on, let's mark them on and then we're laughing. And that is about as basic as your four transformations are going to get. In the next few questions, we'll look at all the different twists that you're going to get with them.